All right, welcome back, class, to, to my English course. Um, <laughs> I need to start this off with a PSA. So, uh, disclaimer, don't bring this kind of uh, evaluation into a high school classroom. We were given explicit instructions on what we shouldn't do, and I happen to use that methodology because I think in a class like this, I have established pretty good rapport with the students. <laughs> consistent and it is relevant and I like to teach with humor. So let's get into this. Last week we talked about sentences. Ms. Kinkley uh, presented us with what sentences are, a good introduction to our class. So who can tell me what a sentence is or what do we need a sentence to have to be a sentence? Yes. Subject and a verb. Subject and a verb. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so here's are some big vocab words I need you guys to know. Who can tell me what an independent clause is? Does anyone have a working definition of this? It's yes. basically a phrase that can say out Yes, and what must it have also to be an independent clause? Subject, a verb, and a complete thought. Yep, there you go. It is essentially just a sentence with the addition of it must complete a thought. So. We know that that's what an independent clause is. What would we say is a dependent clause? Fred? The just said on its own and needs a sentence to rely on. Yes, brilliant. All right. So for this, a complex sentence is essentially just sticking the two together. That's what makes it so complicated. We've got big words like conjunctive adverb and subordinating conjunction on here. We don't need to worry about those, as you'll see on the next slide. So here's some formal definitions of it. Complex sentence is a sentence combining two or more independent clauses with a dependent clause. An independent clause, as we discussed, is a sentence with a subject and a verb that makes a complete thought. Dependent clause is just like that, except it doesn't complete the thought. We're leaving conjunctive adverb and subordinating conjunction blank. Even the book couldn't really make sense of these two. But what it suggested is that we refer to them as turning words. There's going to be a point in the sentence where you use words like because, so, after, therefore, all of those words that join your clauses together, those are our turning words, and they're gonna be big like this. You're not gonna go and read an Applebee's kids menu and go, oh, that's a good use of the subordinating conjunction right there, I like that. <laughs> you might know this around because it's day one. So let's look at some sentences. Who can read the first two for me? Yeah. <laughs> the cat has fur. The cat is soft. All right, and the second set of sentences. Jack. Water parks have slides. They are fun. Wow, that sounded ugly, didn't it? <laughs> you read those perfectly. But Thank those you. Sentences, those sentences suck. We need to get them out of here. Yeah. What's Word. What's happening with these sentences? What's up with them? Why don't they work or why do they work? Fine. I don't like that they're both, they're too short. Like two short. short sentences in a row. Okay. You think we could combine the two of them? Yeah. Make them into one better complete thought. Okay. So then let's look at what a complex sentence might look like. Let's take the first one. Fire. <laughs> Read Yeah, read it off the box, please. I signed my life away to the military, so I should pay extra for a fun <laughs> I really want the second one. Yeah, go ahead and take it away. Mr. Brody is short, therefore his opinions are invalid. All right. That hurts a little bit, but these are facts. <laughs> so what's different about these sentences compared to the ones on the first slide? Okay. They're complex. There's a lot going on. Um, it's not just like, this is this. Like, there's like more going into it. Okay, what all is going on? Exactly? Well, there's like... Uh, with the one I read, there's a uh, dependent clause, Mr. Brody is short, or uh, independent clause, Mr. Brody is short, and then there's a turning word, as you said, and then his opinions are invalid. Okay, I'm glad you pointed that out. Yes, we have the turning word here, therefore, what's the turning word up in this first sentence? So, okay. and oftentimes it'll be um, split up by a comma, too. Not always, there's exceptions to this rule. So true. 
And so for the rest of these, we're going to go through a couple more sentences, and we're just going to break down where the independent clauses and dependent clause returning words, looking for what's happening in the sentences that makes them complicated. Jack, <laughs> Jack is going to have an aneurysm because he is taking seven classes this semester. All right. Word. Jack is going to have an aneurysm. What is that? If we go back to our vocabulary terms that we went over. Fine. Independent clause? Yes. And because? What's the word because doing? It's turning. Right. It's taking the sentence into a different direction. Because he is taking seven classes this semester, if we put... The turning word with that, what do we get? The dependent okay. clause, yeah. It doesn't make a thought all the way through because yeah. you don't know what the reason is, the causation. Go to the second one. This one's for Maya. <laughs> go ahead, take it away, champ. Maya, Maya walked on the 120 degree pavement barefoot and she burned her feet by being careless. All right, complex sentence. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Well. What's an independent clause in here? Yeah. Maya walked on 120 degree pavement barefoot. She, she sure did. And what's a dependent clause? <laughs> right. She burned her feet by being careless. Yes. And she burned her feet by being careless. The and is what makes it the dependent. But it can also stand as two independent clauses that are joined by that term. Oh, Claire, go ahead. <laughs> she did not have been a ghost, so she had no tangible effect on the material plane. This Gosh, on camera. <laughs> What's happening in this sentence? What, what two things are going on? What's happening with baby? Yeah. She could not be a ghost. Right, and why? Uh, why, Claire, could she not have been a ghost? Well, according to the sentence, since she had no tangible effect on the material plane. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, that was the truth. <laughs> Brett likes Dungeons and Dragons, so kind of too much for folks that's familiar with him. Right. Where's the turning word? So. So. There's no words in here. I'm sorry, Jack. I was pulled up and shouted out. It's okay. Positive learning environment where I encourage everyone. To get involved. Yeah. Independent yeah. <laughs> clauses and dependent clauses. What do we got? Give me one more. Dominic, want to give me one? <laughs> the like the, the clauses? Yeah. So you have the connecting word, um, well the, the like where the comma goes, it's the two separate things. So bread like Dungeons and Dragons, and then then that means that he paying for books. Is like paying too much for books is related to it. So okay. the so what is Brett right, likes Dungeons and Dragons then? It's the independent. Yes, because it can stand on its own and completes a thought. Then what is uh, how about paying too much for books is familiar to him? That's dependent on the previous. Right. Yes. All right. Oh, okay, Doctor White, this one's <laughs> you. That is going to be today for change. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it.